Hello, hello. Welcome back to Making It Up. I'm Isa, and today I'm teaching you how to do your makeup like Anne Hathaway. Dude, Anne Hathaway is my queen, always has been. I could not be more obsessed with her. So it was about damn time that I did a celebrity makeup recreation video on her look. I think her look is classic. It's timeless. Not gonna lie, this is probably the hardest celebrity makeup video that I've done because Anne's look has really evolved throughout the years. Um, so it was a little bit hard to nail it down, but don't worry. I'm dissecting this look. I'm making it easy for you to be able to recreate it and feel like a queen too So if you want to know how to do your makeup like Anne Hathaway, let's talk beauty for the most part Her look is very classic like classic makeup look. I think it looks good on her and it suits her She's not revolutionizing anything. It's literally like enhancing makeup makeup that enhances her, you know, beautiful skin She obviously I don't know if she's had any work done, but I do know from my extensive research that she does see a facialist and she has a really consistent skincare routine. She has the means to, you know, get all the great products and all the great treatments for her skin and it shows she looks fucking phenomenal. A very, very, very good skincare routine is like the base of this look, I would say. Her look kind of varies in intensity a little bit, but it's almost always like the same premise. It's super recreatable. So let's get down to the nitty gritty of it, starting with the base. I'm gonna move my computer to the side. So for her base, overall, it's always matte, like satin matte skin. Sometimes very, very pinpointed glow, but for the most part, it's matte all over, which I'm obsessed with. I always love a matte look. I always say this, but I just think it looks very clean and beautiful and it suits her. It doesn't look cakey or chalky. And I feel like it's overall medium coverage depending on the lighting and the pictures. Overall, it's just even matte skin. But I feel like you can achieve many different ways because this is like more of a matte look through and through. I think you can go in with like a little bit of a blurring primer, which is what I'm going with right now. This one by Danessa Myricks. And just hit it in the T-zone or the areas that you know you get a little bit oily because this will really help give you that like matte look without um, having to add a lot of powder and making yourself look cakey. For foundation, you want something that is blurry, you want something that is like satin matte. Try not to go for something that is super light because oftentimes those tend to be a little bit more dewy or, you know, you need a little bit more coverage if you want to look, you know, clean canvas perfection. There you go, like a good matte foundation or like satin matte foundation, whatever you have at your disposal. I think is key to this look. I don't know why I look like a ghost right now. I don't look like this in real life, you guys. Anyways, once foundation is on, I will move on to concealer. It was really hard for me to gather any information because um, she hasn't done like a Vogue Beauty Secrets video or anything of the sort. So I only have a few like publications from her makeup artists talking about what they do on her. So I don't know, like, I don't think she's doing, like, her own makeup, obviously. Whenever you see her, she's had it done professionally. And they never talk about concealer, but I'm going to venture out and say either she uses only foundation and, like, it's used as a concealer, or they're using a concealer. I really need a concealer because I have really, really bad under eyes, so I am 100% using a concealer also to, you know, get rid of any blemishes. Once the concealer is on, it's time for a powder. Again, this is a matte look, you guys. You need a powder, okay? Unless you have like super dry skin and like something mattifying is already dry enough on you. I'm gonna go in with a bit of a loose powder and almost bake. I'm not gonna be intense with it, but I will be applying the powder with my little sponge. And I will be my most intense where I know I tend to get super oily, so it's the T-zone and it's the under eyes. That's where I will concentrate most of the powder. And you want this to give you like a soft, blurred look. I feel like Anne rocks that really, really flawlessly. And I'm hitting the powder everywhere to ensure like a super blank canvas that can work with anything on top. 
Moving on to the cheeks, I think this is where we have the most fun. So Anne Hathaway is a deep winter like me. If you saw my color analysis video, it was a video before this one. So pink and raspberry and plum tones look beautiful on her on the cheeks. But her makeup art is like, depending on the look that she's doing, she's either doing like a pink, cheek sometimes it's a little bit more peachy i will say she looks better when it's one of her best suited colors so that's what i'm gonna do today the pink blush is really like the main focus in a lot of her more recent glam picks i've never seen her with a lot of like bronziness ever it's more like a little bit of contour to add dimension to the face and then she goes ham with a blush not in a bad way it looks diffused it looks super natural she looks gorgeous um so yeah blush is the main focus Sometimes, as I said, there's a bit of pinpointed glow with a bit of like a liquid highlighter or something light that adds a bit of extra dimension to the face, but it's not super dewy or like boom, beaming from the gods. You know what I mean? It's it's a little bit more subtle. So I'm first gonna start off with a little bit of contour and I'm just gonna add it anywhere that, you know, you usually contour. So like cheekbones under the double chin and then on my forehead a little bit and has a beautiful face structure. Mine is obviously very different. We're not trying to make our face structure look like hers. We're just wanting to emulate the makeup. But a bit of contour never hurt anyone. And I'm even gonna add a little bit to the eye to bring out, you know, like, lift. I don't know what I'm saying. I do a little bit on the nose, but not a lot. Just like a leftover kind of situation. Once that is done, I'm gonna go in with blush. I will be doing two layers. I'll be doing like a cream and a powder to really diffuse it and make it look super nice. And as I said, I'm gonna be using something that's a little bit more pink. It isn't super cool tone. It has a little bit of warmth still, in my opinion, but it's not, it's not a peach. It's not a terracotta. It's a pink, which I think is what suits her best. Obviously, if you're doing this and you have a different skin tone and everything and you know that other blushes look good on you, then please use whatever shade looks best. She'll do quite a bit of blush and she does like to concentrate it on the apple of her cheeks. When you do it like over here, it makes you look a little youthful. Your face looks a little fuller. I personally don't love this placement, but we're doing our makeup like Anne Hathaway today, so. And her blush is, it, you can see it, but it doesn't look super intense. It looks very natural. Like it's coming from within. It doesn't look like, you know, she's applied so much blush. Then she looks like a little bit of a clown. I will say though, she kind of goes beyond the cheeks and she adds it a little bit. Like she, she drags it down a little. So I'm, I'm gonna try to do that as well. And if you ever feel like you've done a bit too much, like you've gone overboard, you can just go with a bit of, you know, your foundation or concealer and clean up. But you know, it is meant to look like you're flushed, you know, like your skin is just flushed. She also adds a bit to the nose. And then once that initial layer of blush is on, I'm gonna go in with the second layer and I'm gonna again be using something similar. This is a little bit more cool tone and more mauve, but I'm just gonna be using a tiny, tiny bit of this because I don't have a color, like a powder that is necessarily that like in the same color family. I'm gonna grab like a big, a big brush so you can really like diffuse the blush. It's not super concentrated. We want it to be like, I like this a lot actually and I feel like doing the double um, blush will obviously ensure that this stays on for longer. Blush is usually the first thing to go. So now as for the glow, she doesn't always have a glow, but her skin does look healthy. So I'm gonna be adding just a little bit of a natural, natural glow. Very sparingly, like I'm not gonna do a lot. Just to the tops of the cheekbones here. Okay, now moving on to the eyes, I gotta say this is where I get a little bit stuck and I struggle because she does quite a few variations of her eye look. 
Sometimes it's heavier, sometimes it's not. Again, I dove deep into the internet to see what her makeup artists were saying. There's no videos or anything, so it's a little bit harder. So I kind of made it up as I go. I think I'm at a good point, but first let's talk brows. Anne's brows are beautiful and that's it. Like she has beautiful, just full brows. They're not super chunky or anything. They're perfectly groomed. She really just follows her natural brow look and I think that's beautiful. So I'm gonna be doing the same. I usually do like to push my brows up a little bit. Not doing that today. Today we're following on Anne's footsteps and I'm just gonna fill in the gaps a tiny, tiny bit with a pen. You can use whatever you have. If you want it to be a little bit more diffused, going in with a pencil or like a, just a powder. I think her makeup artists use like a, like a pencil. Maybe a pen, I don't know, I couldn't figure that out, unfortunately. Just gonna go in with the brow gel and I'm really just grooming this. I'm not gonna be feathering up anything. We're f literally following my brow. And it looks so different than what I usually do. I don't think it looks bad. It's just very, very different, a little bit weird. But it seems to work perfectly for Anne. Like her brows always look so gorgeous. For the eyes, she is usually wearing neutral. She's not doing like pops of color or anything. And most of the time she's doing a matte with a bit of an inner corner shimmer. Sometimes she does a, a shimmer all over. She's doing like neutrals most of the time. So it can be more taupey colors, which they tend to suit her best. Or sometimes she goes a little bit more the bronzy route. Again, because I'm also a deep winter like Anne, I'm gonna go more like the cooler tone route this time around. I think she's always doing like an eyeliner though. And the intensity varies. Sometimes it's just like a little quick line all over and extended out into a wing. Other times it's like I feel like her most worn look is that classic eyeliner shape that's just framing your eye. You're not doing anything crazy. You're just adding a bit of liner to make your lash line look a little bit denser. She has hooded eyes so she usually concentrates the eyeliner to the outer corner and she wings it out. She always has like natural looking lashes. A lot of the times I don't think she's using falsies and when she is they're very natural looking so obviously I'm not a falsie person. I'm not gonna do any falsies but you totally can. She does a lot and that is why I struggle a little bit with this because I don't know which route to take, how to best serve this look. So I'm just gonna, I think I'm just gonna wing it. You know, I'm like gonna grab elements from her looks. One thing that I do know is that even though she's doing eyeshadow, it always looks very, very clean. It doesn't look overwhelming. So that's what I'm gonna try to emulate, I guess. Of course I'm doing primer. I'm literally grabbing whatever palettes or whatever I can find that will help me recreate this look. Don't worry about what you're using. I'm gonna grab this like super light, very, very light eyeshadow to set my lids. And this will also be like a canvas for me because it already, as you can see, it looks already like a little bit brighter and cleaner. And I think that's a look that and does a lot, like really, really clean, clean lid. And then she'll usually go in with a bit of a, I think she uses black a lot. So I'm just gonna go in with black as well. I think she does a few things so that her lash line can look thick, but natural. I think the first thing is lining the waterline, no, sorry, the tight line. And I'm just gonna go and do like the outer half because I know that she does, she likes to do a lot of like half liner. Um, this way it looks less intense and it doesn't bring your eyes close together. It actually pulls them apart. And I think that is best for me as well as her apparently. So immediately after doing that, you can already tell that my lash line looks and feels a little bit more dense. It's a very, very easy way to add that like density and depth and contrast without having to do anything up top here. I do think that she goes into like a black and I'm gonna just do a bit of a half liner here and smudge it out. I, again, there are different variations of this and I will be winging it out like slightly 
but I do want to keep most of the color here, like right in the outer corner. I feel like that's where it suits her best. I really am starting out with just a bit of eyeliner. And using an angled brush to diffuse it. And you don't want to go too far in because if you do, you get into that like inner corner territory that I think is not the best. So we just want to focus all the color out here. Okay, so the wing extended a little bit more than I was planning to, but that's fine. She also does wings. When she does a wing though, I will say it's either like, as I said, super thin and like just all over, or she will go a little bit more graphic. So I'm gonna go on top of this with just a little bit of like a, a black, more precise eyeliner. I only have this one, it's water activated because all my like um, liquid liners dried out. So I'm gonna be using this one. I need a little bit of water though. I didn't plan this. I'm just gonna add just a little, little line to intensify the liner. It's gonna be very subtle. You're gonna think like why, like what is the reason for this? But I do feel like it adds a little bit of something extra. Now we're gonna go into a bit of eyeshadow. I do wanna add a bit of a taupe and just add the tiniest bit to the outer corner and crease and then do a little bit on the lower lash line because she does have a bit of definition in that sense but it's not harsh whatsoever. So I'm just gonna go in with like a taupe, just a regular old taupe and just add the tiniest bit, kind of like where the crease and the liner connect and just add a bit of that there, just for some extra dimension. But I do think it's like these little details that really make Anne's look special, you know? Doing a bit of the same on the outer corner of the lower lash line because we don't want it to be super intense. I'm gonna go back into the super, super light eyeshadow and a flat brush if I can ever find one. And I'm just gonna add a bit more of this to the lids to open things up. Like you see the difference, it already looks a lot cleaner and it adds a little bit more contrast with the, uh, the crease color that we did right there at the end. Last but not least, eyeshadow wise, we want to do a bit of an inner corner shimmer. She does tend to do that a lot, whether she's doing shimmers on the rest of her eye or not. So I'm gonna go in with a bit of a shimmer. It's very champagne-y, it's very neutral. And just hit it right at the inner corner there. This really opens up your eye. And then one unofficial thing that I have not heard any of her makeup artists talk about or anything. This is just something that I gathered from like looking at her pictures a lot. She always has a really bright waterline. So I think that is either like a white liner or a nude liner. I'm gonna be doing a nude liner. To add a bit more of that like brightness under the eyes, I think it adds something really special to the look. You see it just, I don't know, something about it is like boom. For mascara again, she's usually using like a volumizing mascara and a lot of the time she's rocking her natural lashes or she's just adding like super nice and elegant falsies. I'm just gonna do mascara. I'm doing a voluminizing mascara because I think it really plays well with the look. We're gonna try not to smudge because we want this to be as clean as possible. And she keeps it light on the lower lashes, but there's always a little bit of something there. So that's like my interpretation of the eyes. Again, they look very different on her because she has hooded eyes, like completely hooded. That might be because of age, it might be because that's just her face shape, whatever. It'll look a little bit different on everybody, but I think this is working for me. It's kind of like the gist. I'm really happy, I love this. It's a look that suits literally everyone. I'm into it, let's move on to the lips. Anne Hathaway has 
incredible lips. Like it's stupid how beautiful her lips are. And she always looks like she's wearing no lipstick. More often than not, it's always something nude and it's a little bit more matte satin. There's not a lot of gloss going on there. Sometimes she's wearing like a red or something a little bit more crazy, but for the most part, it's always a nude and it always looks like a My Lips But Better shade on her. Sometimes it's a little pinkier, sometimes it's a little peachier. I think it depends a lot on what blush she's using. I have a theory that she is using the same thing on her cheeks that she's on her lips. Apparently not like if you go through the makeup artist rundown she's using different stuff but to me it's a really monochrome like she's always trying to match it with her blush and I think it really works for her it always looks kind of like blurry in a way and also like just bitten lips like I don't know what kind of magic she does I've never seen that on anyone else I think part of that is because she has such beautiful lips so um, it was a little bit hard for me again to like try to recreate this because I have baby lips they're tiny but I just decided to go in the same route and like do something very very similar to my cheek color so I will be using my blush as well and then kind of mixing it up a little bit. The makeup artists never talk about lining her lips. She has beautiful lips. I'm sure they line her lips. I'm just gonna line with something really close to my lip shape and of course I will be overdrawing baby. We want to look like Anne Hathaway so we will be faking our way to fuller lips. Then I'm gonna go in with my blush color. This is like a nude sticks blush. I feel like this is something you can use everywhere. And just blot it on. I don't wanna go super full out because as I said, it looks like she has like more blurred lips. She's not using like a lot of product on them. And I think that's beautiful, but it's a little bit light for me personally. It's just what I'm feeling. So I'm gonna go in with something that's a little bit more warm tone peachy. And again, just adding a bit. I like it. I don't think it's necessarily like the same. I think this is close enough. And again, it is very tight in with the blush. So I love it a lot. And that is it. That is basically how you can get an Anne Hathaway makeup look. Let me just get rid of these. I think it's a classic look. It's a look we can all rock and it's not hard. It's really, really, truly not hard. It's simple. It's all about like enhancing your features. So now that this is done, let's move on to some product recommendations. Finding out what she specifically uses or her makeup artists use on her was a bit hard because you don't have any videos or the information is not like readily available, but I did my deep dive so that I can tell you guys exactly some of the products that she uses and give you a few dupes. You don't have to buy anything. These are just suggestions. Let's get to them. She works a lot with Gucci Westman and Raul Alejandre. I don't know if that's how you say it. In my mind, it's the same thing as Raul Alejandro. So Gucci Westman, obviously, Westman Atelier. She's the creator, founder, whatever. She uses a lot of her products on Anne. It's expected. And then Raul is a global makeup artist for Valentino. So she uses a lot of those brands. I'm venturing out to say a lot of the products that are not featured and that they don't talk about are actually used on her face as well because they're just, you know, it's what they represent. So why wouldn't they use these things? For foundation, she's usually using the Westman Atelier Vital Skincare Complexion Drops Dewy Skin Tint. Because this is a skin tint, like Gucci says, she uses this all over the face and then she'll use the foundation stick for more of a concealer kind of situation. But honestly, I don't get it because this is like a dewy skin tint. Yeah, it looks a little bit more natural. It doesn't look super you know, shiny and dewy, but Anne's makeup never looks dewy. It always looks very, very much like matte satin. So it's a little bit confusing, but apparently this is one that she uses. And then she's using the Vital Skin Full Coverage Foundation and Concealer Stick. So you can use it for both. She uses it more as a concealer. I would never spend this amount of money, but yeah, this is more like a matte, foundation, fuller coverage. I feel like this is something that will be more used all over her face, but that's not what the makeup artist says. And she also has used the Valentino, very Valentino 24 hour long wear liquid foundation. This is $60, shade range is a little bit better. And this, I don't really know much about this. It's a matte finish, medium coverage and long wearing. So I feel like this is more along the lines of what you see on Anne's face all the time. Like it definitely looks healthy. It's not super matte. It's more of like a demi-matte and uh, 
yeah, it does cover. Like it has good coverage from what I'm seeing over here, but it's not overwhelming. So I think, I mean, sounds like a great foundation. It definitely sounds more like what I see on Anne's face when I'm looking at her pictures, like matte foundation, medium coverage, it's buildable. If you want something along the same lines of all of those products that I just talked about, I think the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Liquid Foundation is fantastic. I used to own this a long time ago. It's less than $10. The shade range is abysmal, truly not great, but it is very inexpensive. It is medium coverage, it's more of a satin. It's not super shiny because if it's made to be worn on camera, you don't want that to be super shiny and you can tell from the pictures here, but I think this is like a great alternative if you really want to try this look out and you want something that's more matte that is a little bit full of coverage but you don't want to pay a lot I think this is the perfect product to just experiment with as for powder she uses two different ones obviously the Valentino go clutch refillable radiant setting powder wait this is $200 this is how can the it's $200 because you can use it as a clutch this is insane. If you have $200 to spare, you can just buy this little Valentino clutch with a powder inside. It does nothing for you other than powder because it's not even pretty. But anyways, this is a powder that Anne uses. Um, I don't know what shade she uses, but this is one of the powders that is used on her. So it prolongs your makeup. Apparently it has a little bit of coverage and it leaves your skin looking radiant. Cool, but I don't understand why it's $200. When Gucci Westman is doing her makeup, she's using the Westman Atelier Vital Press Skincare Blurring Talk Free Setting Powder. This is $75. Insane as well. This is good for pores, good for uneven texture. Press powder, clean beauty. This is actives on it, like actual skincare. Vitamin C, quinoa seed extract, probiotic. Um, okay. So it has all those things, but it also just, you know, sets your skin, blurs it out a little bit gives it a little bit of that matte look. But I'm gonna say it, it's just a powder. And you can get a lot of powders for a lot less money that do the exact same thing. The Sephora Collection 12 Hour Translucent Loose Setting Powder. Again, it gives you like that 12 hour wear claim that the Valentina one had. This one is translucent, it's not pressed, but I feel like it kind of does the same. You get like a soft blurred look. I haven't tried this but it has good reviews. It's $15, so you know, if you don't wear a powder often or you just are looking for one, I think this would be a good one, like a good powder to experiment with. We're moving on to the cheek products. There are a lot, so I wanna kinda go a little quicker. Obviously, she's using the Westman Atelier Face Trace Cream Contour Stick in the shade Biscuit. It suits her skin very well. We've seen this before. A lot of celebrities use it. It's apparently amazing. I don't think it's a bad product at all. It looks really good, um, and it gets the job done. There are only three shades, which is not great. You could also get like a mini size if you just wanna try it out. It's really expensive. I don't think it's a bad product. I just feel like it's very expensive for what it is. If you're doing your makeup yourself and you want something more affordable, I would definitely say go for the Milk Makeup Sculpt Cream Contour Stick. This is only $24. It's what I use today, actually. It's really tiny, but a little bit goes a long way. The formula is also pretty amazing. I also think this is like clean beauty, so it kind of gets the job done and it's a really, really good cool tone contour. So I think this could be a great alternative. For blush, again, she uses the Westman Atelier Baby Cheeks Lip and Cheek Cream Blush Stick in the shade Petal and Minette. Sometimes they're mixed, sometimes not, but I would say Petal would suit her best because it's more of, of that pinky, like, rosy tone. It just works better on her skin tone. These blushes are very, very pretty. Like, it's just, like, a, a beautiful blush with some, like, beautiful ingredients in there that make your skin look gorgeous. You don't necessarily need to spend $48 on this. She also uses the Valentino Eye to Cheek Eyeshadow and Blush in the shade Very Rose, which is a cool rosebud pink with light reflecting pearls. You can use these both on your eyes and cheeks. This is $52. The shade is beautiful. I think it really suits Anne's skin, but it's $52 for like a, a pinky blush, which I think you can find in your collection already or like literally anywhere else. 
A great alternative for these I would say is the Nude Sticks Nudies Cream Blush All Over Face Color. I know this is $35, I know it is expensive, but honestly, all the ones that I have, I used one today, but all the ones that I have have lasted me so long. They're great for the lips as well, so they're very versatile. I feel like you get a bang for your buck and there are so many shades. You can get the satin finish, you get radiant finish, you can get the matte finish. I would obviously recommend the matte finish. I think this color in Cherie, this is a neutral nude rose blush is perfect. It's that like pinky, rosy blush that looks obviously beautiful on Anne's skin. It's a cream formula. It's easy to blend, multitasking, a three-in-one. It's so easy to apply and blend. Like honestly, this is one of my favorite formulas for blush out there. She also has used the Valentino V Lighter Illuminating Face Primer and Highlighter with Hyaluronic Acid. This is $58. It's also pretty natural. So you can use it as a primer before doing your foundation or you can use it as more like a pinpointed glow product. It also looks very, very beautiful. You know, like it's just like a liquid highlighter. We've seen that so much everywhere. You can really get this literally anywhere. I feel like you can get basically the same look with the e.l.f. halo glow liquid filter or the charlotte tilbury one if you already own that just anything of this sort it's a highlighter that is very very skin like it'll give you that glow from within it's beautiful this is only 14 dollars and it just works it gets the job done moving on to the brows she obviously uses the Westman Atelier Bond Brow Defining Brow Pencil. This is $38. It comes in four shades. And I just feel like it's your like classic brow pencil. You know what I mean? It has a brow gel on the other side, which comes in handy. It's just a brow, brow pencil, a slanted brow pencil. I feel you can get this for cheaper is all I'm going to say. Now this isn't explicitly said, like the makeup artist never says that they use this on her, but I'm willing to bet this is the Valentino Brow Trio Eyebrow Liner. It's $40. This is very interesting. It's like a trio. We got a spoolie, we got a bit of a pencil, and then we get a pen. I don't think I've ever seen anything quite like this. It looks really nice. I like the mix of like the pen and the pencil and you also get a spoolie. Oftentimes with products like this, you compromise the spoolie. So I really appreciate that. I would prefer this over the Westman Atelier one. It's a little bit more expensive, but it's more cool and innovative, you know? I think you can get kind of the same look with the Maybelline Build-A-Brow 2-in-1 Brow Pen and Sealing Gel. Now, if you want like a pencil, I think NYX have great pencils or just a powder that you can find in your collection would do. But if you want something that has like a built-in brow gel and you can do your brows with, I think this one by Maybelline, it's new. It's $14.99, it's beautiful. I use it to do my brows today. It's very precise, very, very nice. I'm a fan, honestly. And you get a bit more uh, color selection, so that's really nice. It's also a lot less expensive. So let's move on to eyeshadow again. It is a bit more challenging because I see her doing a lot of different things. Willing to bet though that if it's Gucci Westman, she's using the Westman Atelier iPods Cream Eyeshadow. So these are like creams. This comes in like three different shades. I'm thinking just purely from what I've seen on Anne, Le Jour's is the one. And these are all shimmers. Again, I see Anne wearing a lot of mattes, but maybe that's like not even, she's not even wearing eyeshadow and when she is, she's wearing something like this. $88 for like an eyeshadow trio is bad. Like not, 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 no. If you want something along the same lines, I would go for, I've mentioned this one a lot, but I really do think it's a great dupe for anything if you're just trying out some eyeshadows. It's the e.l.f. Bite Size Eyeshadow Palette in the shade Cream and Sugar. You get really, really similar colors in here and you get two mattes and two shimmers and they're really good. For $3, they're like really good eyeshadows. I feel like you could easily recreate Anne's looks with these. They didn't say which eyeliner they use on her, but I'm willing to bet it's the Westman Atelier I Love You Clean Cool Eyeliner Pencil. It comes in brown and black. So when she's doing an eyeliner, I think this could be it. This is $34, not the craziest eyeliner price, but it is a little bit steep. If you want something just to test out the look, I would say the ColourPop BFF Creme Gel Liner. It comes in a lot of colors you can pick. It's not the same as a cool eyeliner. It doesn't glide the same. If you want a cool eyeliner, you can totally get one from the drugstore, but I really, really enjoy these liners in particular because they're easy to use, they're affordable, and they last a long time. So I'm always gonna be recommending them. And then for the more graphic eyes, the wing liners, the, you know, more precise 
line work. I'd be willing to bet they use the Valentino Twin Liner Gel and Liquid Eyeliner. And I think the number four, like color four, which comes in black and brown, would be the best. This is again $40. Not great, not great. But you do get that versatility. If you want something that is also liquid and has like a very fine tip, but you don't want to pay $40, I would go for the NYX Epic Ink Vegan Waterproof Liquid Liner. You get it in black and brown. And it is really good. It's $10. It's also pretty like precise I would say and you can get super precise with it as well this is just a, a very beautiful dupe for mascara she's either using the Valentino Magnificent smudge proof volumizing mascara this is $32 the wand looks really really good to really like grip all your hairs wow yeah it is this is beautiful it looks very very beautiful oh yeah looks gorgeous $34 $32 sorry it's pretty expensive for a mascara but this one is nice it's like giving the results I don't hate it and then she's also used the Westman Atelier I love you mascara really like the packaging of this this is $58 so crazy expensive oh my god those eyelashes look amazing. I really hope this is like real because her eyelashes look gorgeous. Oh, this is $58. I feel like it's a little bit too steep, but then again, it's a volumizing mascara that Anne has used in the past. I think if you want a volumizing mascara that doesn't break the bank, Essence I Love Extreme Volume Mascara. It's $5. It's amazing. It's what I use today. It really grips your lashes. It's kind of similar to the Valentino brush. It also has that like chunky, like big one that really grips your lashes and volumizes them. I really love this. It's my volumizing mascara of choice. And then for the lips again, this was a really, really big challenge for me because... She's using a lot of different things all the time, so it was really hard to track these down, but I think I did. She uses the Westman Atelier Squeaky Clean Liquid Lip Hydrating Lip Balm. I think she probably uses this as lip prep because I don't see a lot of like glossy lips on the red carpet and stuff. This is $38, you get a few shades. It looks really beautiful. I don't know which shade she uses, but it looks, it, yeah, it's like a liquid balm. It looks so nourishing and nice. It is $38 though, and if she's only using it as like prep, I don't know how worth it that is, you know? A known dupe for that liquid lip balm is the Make Beauty Serum Balm Hydrating Lip Treatment. Again, you have a few colors and you also have a clear one that you can use. So also is a little bit plumping. Apparently this is a known dupe to the other one and it is $26. So it is a little bit less expensive. They don't really talk about any lip liners used on Anne. I think she does use a lip liner, but I didn't see any like Westman Atelier lip liners or Valentina lip liners. So I'm just gonna throw mine out there. NYX Slim Lip Pencil Creamy Long Lasting Lip Liner. Hello, the most amazing lip liner ever. It's $5. I would say pick the one that goes best with your own lip color. The one that's like my lips but better because I think that's the one that's gonna serve you the most when it comes to a look like Anne's. Now for actual lipstick, she uses the Valentino Rosso Valentino High Pigment Refillable Lipstick, $45. She uses the shade 100R Roman Grace, which is a romantic nude pink. It's neutral because it's pink, but it's a little bit more warm tone. So she has used this one in the past. I don't think it's the only lip product that she uses, but this is one of the shades that she uses. I'm also willing to bet that she uses the Westman Atelier Lip Suede Lipstick Palette. They have one in Le Rouge, which are the reds, and then Le Nudes. You have a warm rose, a peony, a cafe creme and a mold wine color. They look very nice. They're matte. They're hydrating. Like very, very sheer shades that I think actually make a lot of sense because you always see Anne and her lips are always like more blurred, more like bitten, stained. It doesn't look like she's wearing like a full on lipstick. I think this could be the product that actually makes that happen. I think one lip color from the drugstore that could actually be a dupe for the Valentina one is the Maybelline Color Sensational Ultimate Ultimate Slim Lipstick. This is $9.99 and the shade is more stone which is more of a rose mauve -y. as you can see it's like pink but it has a little bit of that warm tone I don't think it's exactly the same but I think it could be like a good dupe like a close dupe and that my friends is how you do your makeup like Anna freaking Hathaway this is a beautiful look super classic it really focuses on enhancing your features and I feel like it looks good on everyone and now that we're done with Anne Hathaway who should I do next like whose makeup do you think is super cool and you want to learn how to do let me know down below I have a list but I really want to do the people that you guys want to see so please leave your suggestions below as always and if you enjoyed this video make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe down below if you like easy and real makeup and beauty content that you can actually relate to thank you for coming on this journey with me I I love you. I hope this was helpful and I hope to see you right here for my next video. Bye. Mwah.